state of development or implementation. In the African context, we don't have a roadmap, but we started with a consolidated plan of action that was referred to this morning. And we said, what are the, what are the, the, the flagship areas? What are the focus areas in the consolidated plan of action? Also, as they are supported by the Book of Life and Lighthouse projects. And we then looked at these priority areas, extracted some of them that are very dependent on research infrastructures, and identified some of those research infrastructures. And then we started doing a, a mapping. We also consulted uh, among ourselves with the regional office uh, of ICSO for Africa, with NEPA, MST, the Planning and uh, Office of Science and Technology, and now the Planning and Coordinating Agency, and also the African Science Technology and Innovation Indicators, who present or represent quite a good network in Africa. The National Research Foundation in South Africa, who's uh, uh, very well connected in terms of the international cooperation uh, linkages and the PAIRIP uh, Advisory Committee. We believe that we still have to talk directly to the African Union, and specifically the Commissioner in Charge of Human Resources, Science and Technology, the UNESCO Bureau of Science and Technology in Africa, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, and the African Development Bank. Um, what was the methodology and approach? Identifying the S3 projects, noting the status of the project, identifying non S3 projects that have potential for European African partnerships, because it's not only S3. It's the broader European context. And there are many activities <coughs> happening outside the roadmap of S3 already. So then we had an understanding of the European environment. And then we identified the consolidated plan of action projects where the research infrastructures play a major role. We looked at the Book of Lighthouse projects and we identified quite a few other areas of importance that are not necessarily described in this broader perspective of where the priorities lie. So we had a pan African view. We then plotted the European activities against the Pan-African activities. And we had the landscape of synergies and gaps out of that. And I'll show you some snapshots of that landscape, because that landscape is a huge uh, spreadsheet which I cannot really show you in, in, in this uh, presentation environment. And then we did the regrouping of priority areas in both regions where we said, there are different descriptions in Europe, different descriptions in Africa. Some of the things, some of the things are consolidated. <coughs> How do we extract now, and I think we came up with about 12 areas that we believe we have to develop further. What did this yield from S3 in terms of the program areas? Nine of them with 53 projects, as they are described, as I said, in the basic thing strategy. Non-S3, we looked at two with 11 projects. So the total for Europe was about uh, 64 projects. In the Pan-African context, in the, the CPA environment, four of the major focus areas, <coughs> I'll show you what those are now, 57 potential research areas or projects. And now, we, we should be careful, these are defined as projects. These we define as potential projects that would contribute to that focus area. So it's not necessarily a declared project of the AU or, or the CPA. Book of Lighthouse, and some of the programs not identified by CPA or Book of Lighthouse. So a total in Africa of about 99 potential RIs. Um, total of 163 RIs altogether. In uh, consulting with the, with the advisory committee as well, we believe that we have to actually scale this down and come up with a few that really have growth potential, that really have potential for collaboration, that are alive and well and, and we are now in the process of doing this, and you're very welcome to comment. I will show you later where you can have access to this in time uh, to also comment. You know this, many of you, those are the S3 focus areas as they group them together, social sciences, humanities, environmental sciences, energy, and so on. And then there are projects that are part of the, the CERN environment, uh, which we define like that. Non-S3, uh, those things are not necessarily listed in the S3 list, but we know that there's a lot of interaction between African researchers <coughs> and uh, the, the various experiments on the Large Hadron Collider, and, uh, synchrotron work, uh, long-term biodiversity ecosystem and awareness research networks. These are the two research environments seem to be very interesting research infrastructure network environments where I think there can be a lot of collaboration because a lot of this is depending on 
what I call a natural laboratory where the biodiversity environment or the climate situations in Africa and Europe are not the same and people want to compare and exchange data. And this is where the data storage, the data banks and those things are very important. In the health context as well, uh, in, in, in the biobanking uh, environment, uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity. Filter, the long-term ecological research, European Space Agency, you are aware that South Africa has recently formed a national space agency. There's a lot of activity happening in space, specifically in Nigeria and Africa. So what do we do with that? Uh, some of it is commercial, some of it is, 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 can, can be described as a research infrastructure. How do we deal with that? And, and a few others. We then, this is just an example of what we extract. Taking the, the S3 projects, uh, that's the name of it, the status of it, and try and identify what are the facilities and equipment types that are in there. Uh, and then we did a short description of each of them, and these things are now going to get onto a database, uh, which you can, can get access to on the payroll website. But there's another example in terms of energy, so we studied S. If we then look at Pan-African focus areas, what we extracted from the CPA and Book of Lighthouse, that we believe research infrastructures are connected to. If you look at the CPA, there's biodiversity, biotechnology, and indigenous knowledge, energy, water, and desertification, material sciences, manufacturing, laser and post harvest technologies, interesting combination, and information and communication on technologies and space science and technologies. And down here, we have detailed uh, descriptions of some of those areas, broken up into, into these sub-areas. Consolidate the Book of Lighthouse, uh, the whole um, science and technology capacity in Africa to implement the, the CPA with certain details here, for example, building uh, ICT uh, capability and capacity, climate, climate research, disaster management research, and things like that. And I'm not going in the short time I have into that detail. It's just showing the process, the context in which we, we thought. And then enhancing cooperation in space applications and technology. We then put four categories to get together in addition to this, the improvement of health, which, are not, which is not necessarily explicitly mentioned in any of those environments. Astronomy, which you know there's a, a huge interest in what Africa, South Africa specifically, also can, can offer. Social sciences and humanities and physics as a very active environment, specifically around uh, nuclear science accelerator environments and so forth. So we then took pan-African examples. These things may not be research infrastructures, they may be uh, facilities, national facilities, uh, research institutions, and so on. Can I just interrupt myself? Look at your watches. It's 11-11 on 11-11-11. You will wait a while for this moment again. <laughs> The decision is made now. Yeah. Okay. We will, we will hear the fireworks outside, I'm sure. <laughs> right. So we looked at things like SIOP, the South African Institute for Bi Aquatic Biodiversity, looking specifically at biodiversity, biotechnology, indigenous knowledge now. Indigenous knowledge, for example, is ANDI, which is the African Network for Drugs and Diagnostics Innovation, which is health-related, but also uh, indigenous knowledge, uh, uh, traditional health-related which is headquartered in Ethiopia with hubs elsewhere in Africa, the which is South Africa and so on. We looked at um, the Agalas uh, Somali Large Marine Ecosystem Program, and you can see there are quite a few African nations that are already connected. So we started with, as I said, at least there's collaboration in the continental context. Now, there are similar things that we know in Europe, and then how do you map these onto each other? That is one for uh, space applications and technology. Some of them, as you can see, commercial. Looking at, 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 at uh, for example, the Africa Array, which is an array of uh, uh, seismographs, looking from a geosciences perspective, also a prediction of uh, potential catastrophe in Africa. Uh, there are organizations that are funded by uh, insurance companies that does research in this environment not necessarily a research infrastructure, but with the potential to make a huge contribution to similar kind of networks uh, in Europe and elsewhere. Now, 
as I said, there's about 160 or whatever of these combinations that we went through. And I'm not going to bore you with the detail. There's in-depth, for example, which is an longitudinal health and population study network. Um, there are some of the um, uh, things that we have, for example, here in, in the Western Cape, Cubic, which is a, a collaborative activity between universities here, which looks at brain imaging, very advanced uh, brain imaging, the Siemens as a company that's also involved. We then said, but how do we now start filtering through these things? Let us first look at the status of the S3 project. Some of them are implemented. Some of them have implementation envisaged by the end of next year. Some of them are approved in the planning stage. There's ones that have been approved now, but will take some time. And some of them have actually been suspended. So um, let us focus on the short term, the top few here. But then we see that there's a huge gap for example, many of the energy things in Europe are longer term things. Many of the energy initiatives in Africa are longer term things. And you cannot really throw them off the table because one of the questions that we have to answer in this, this whole uh, project is what are the needs in Africa that could influence the way ESPRI develops? Uh, and the other question we have to answer is which of these facilities could be on African soil uh, instead of European soil that also needs to be used by, by the Europeans. And these are snapshots of those maps. S3 projects, South African initiatives that could easily tie in within the context of the Pan-African uh, flagship focus areas. So here we looked at biological and medical sciences. Here we looked at environmental sciences. You see the whole Argo environment is uh, GMO West Africa, Argo South Atlantic. Um, there's AfriBab. Uh, which uh, matches in terms of uh, its activities and its intentions with something like like Lightwatch. Uh, so you have to understand what each of these allies are and then start exploring how can we get them together. So as I said, this is more a baseline for further discussion than it's an inventory. There's physics, for example, physical sciences and engineering, a lot of activity, astronomy and physics that already takes place. Some of this is mostly South African based, except that one is Namibia with the uh, high energy uh, 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 spectro, uh, what is it called? Yeah, it's um, cosmic based, that's what I was looking at. So looking now at what we have, we said, where are the common areas that we think we can start building collaboration? And we came up with a new categorization, astronomy, Biodiversity, environment, biological, climate change, natural hazards, energy health, ICT, materials and manufacturing, physics, social sciences, humanities, space and water. And we then said, okay, what are the European programs? What are the Pan African ones? And well, is it ESPRI or non ESPRI? Uh, does it represent facilities and equipment? Is it a repository? Is cyber infrastructure very involved? Is it a network? And do we know about existing collaboration? This is, from, this is something that we really have to go take through a few iterations and have more, some more discussion on. But again, just showing you the process of thinking. And I'm not going into the detail. And uh, if you don't see yourself there, don't kill me. Uh, it's probably because I didn't know about you or because I missed you or because it's somewhere else and we don't show it. Biodiversity in the environment, biological environments, um, look at, for example, I, we, we will have a presentation from the ICGB today from, from, from Igbo and from Mike on the EDCGP, which I have not really linked. And you have to tell us exactly where you think it's, where you already have the context uh, with the European context. We couldn't really find a clear SP environment. Maybe you know that. That kind of conversation still has to, to take place. Um, you see now, the, the, the question is the IC, ICGEB and SANBI, are they research infrastructures or not according to our definition? This is something I think you can address also when you go into more detail focusing on the medical and the, the ICT environments. I'm getting to the ICT, this is uh, natural hazards, energy, uh, wind scanner, not really much. ESCOP is doing some work in that context, um, health. Um, ICT, we will have um, Mike and uh, Colin speaking about uh, research networks, 
some rent, tenant, and so on. There's the high-performance computing environment where most countries are moving towards, where South Africa now has a national facility type uh, initiative. But then there's price, which also focus on that in the European context, and yes, we got price, price was cancelled. So what now, what do we do now? The next week you will have a long discussion on Euro Africa ICT infrastructure. We cannot throw it away, but there's not necessarily a link with, with S3. So how do we deal with that? Materials and manufacturing. Uh, a lot of this you will see in places like the National Laser Center because there's a, a definitive, uh, it was also represented here today, there's a definitive uh, uh, discussion around the use of lasers in manufacturing. Something that already represents an African, well-linked African research infrastructure is the African Laser Center which was put together a couple of years ago where the various countries in Africa that have an interest in the application of lasers. Um, and physics, I'm not going through that. Social sciences and humanities, Karen. I also put Karen under the ICT because of the human uh, language, technology environment, space, water. Yeah, okay, that, that, that's where we are in terms of identifying things and putting them down. If you look at, at, at uh, I have now gotten the signal that I have to finish. The next step is a database. It's an inventory that's um, compatible with a serif environment, the CRIS environment, or CRIS environment, sorry. This is being done by our Greek partners, EKT. They will now populate the database with the structures and the relationships that we've identified and publish this inventory online for the project. And this is when it becomes visible to you. Those were comments by Nikos on this. Let us just look at the, the next steps. We now have to undertake an analysis of the existing access in these environments. Now, not necessarily environment by environment, but what we will do is we will um, talk about um, the enablers, the kind of agreements, the binational agreements, the existing relationships, sometimes between a country and a facility, sometimes between a facility and a facility. We will look at that. Uh, undertaking analysis what happens from, from Europe to Africa, then uh, do recommendations on how to improve this and come up with a strategic understanding of mutual African and European access to, to research infrastructures. And then understand the potential to contribute to the implementation of S3 from the African side and also the, the potential that Africa could host some, um, some of these infrastructures. These are now according to the description that we have in the, in the, EU, uh, sorry, in the EU program. And then come up with an insight into the potential for African European cooperation into these infrastructures. Thank you very much. For, for this uh, interesting presentation and above all the efforts uh, exerted uh, to give the baseline for the uh, EU and Africa uh, research infrastructure. Uh, I'm sure this will uh, uh, give uh, uh, food for thought for the afternoon sessions and also I'm sure that our participants are eager for the question and answer session. Uh, and now it's my pleasure to present our second speaker. Uh, uh, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Daniel Adams. Uh, he is the Chief Director in Emerging Research Areas and Infrastructure at the Department of Science and Technology, South Africa. He has so many duties, uh, uh, among which uh, 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 monitoring and evaluating new emerging research areas as well.